So the RX 480 launched, what, a year and a half ago, right? And you may have one and you might be thinking, it's getting a little long in the tooth. It's not holding up to the performance standards that you want it to, and it's already obsolete because the RX 580 has come out. Well, in today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to take an RX 480 and get a $0, no money spent, completely free upgrade to your card so that you can get some extra performance. Warranties may be avoided here, but you know what? It's free performance upgrade. So we're gonna put this card in the system and I'm gonna walk you guys through the entire process. So let's go. So the first step is obviously installing the card into your system. You're not gonna be able to do the upgrade to the 480 unless it's in your PC. Now the best way to do this is to have a secondary, actually a primary graphics card in your system already so that when anything goes wrong, it's not affecting your display out. Your primary graphics card can be anything from, you know, a GT 1030 to we're using a GTX 1080 Ti, or it can even be your integrated graphics on your Intel CPUs. It doesn't matter if you just want something that displays out in case something happens to go wrong with what we're about to do, which is possible, not necessarily likely. So let's throw this card in the system. We're also doing this on an X399 motherboard, so there's plenty of PCI Express slots. So it's easy as just slotting it in, turning it on. We have the PC going, we're gonna boot into Windows, and I'm gonna show you guys the rest of the, the story. We're in Windows now, and that means that we can go ahead and get this process started. So to start this process, we're gonna need to go to a website called Tech Power Up. Tech Power Up is where we're gonna find all of the utilities that we need for this specific project. So we're gonna be converting our RX 480 into an RX 580. And the way we're gonna do that is through a few pieces of software. Primarily, we're gonna be using GPU Z. We're gonna be going to their BIOS uh, database. And then also, they have something called the ATI Flash Utility, which apparently doesn't appear on this drop down menu. So here we go, the ATI Flash Utility. So we're gonna download the ATI Flash Utility. We're gonna download GPU Z, GPU Z, depending on what region of the world you're in. And I'm just showing you how to download it, but I already have it installed. So for GPU Z, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to pull it up. This is, this is probably the most important step to the entire process, so make sure you do this one. So we have GPU Z pulled up. You see our primary gra graphics card is that 1080 Ti, so we're gonna to go to this drop-down menu. We're gonna select that RX 480. You can see the RX 480 is here, has decent uh, GPU clocks, has decent memory clocks, everything's set up there. This is the most important part, guys. You wanna to go to this little doohickey button right there to save your BIOS. We're gonna to save to file. That means that we have our stock 480 BIOS. That means that if anything goes wrong, you can revert it to what it shipped with and you will have no issues whatsoever, hopefully at least. Obviously, there's things that can go wrong, uh, so I wish you the best of luck. So we're saving the stock BIOS to make sure that we have something to go back to if we brick the entire system. Now we have to go get an RX 580 BIOS that we want to do. Now typically, what you want to do is find the most compatible BIOS with your card, which usually means, if within the case of our Power Color Red Devil 480, we're going to want to pick up a Power Color Red Devil 580 BIOS. If you have a Strix 480, try to pick up the Strix 580 because they're most closely aligned in terms of their layout on the PCB. That's not always the case. There are differences between the 480 and 580 to handle different VRMs and all of that. Same manufacturer, same type of card is probably your best bet. But it can go wrong. Not It's not guaranteed to work in every instance, so you just have to you have to risk it for the biscuit, basically. So we're, we're just selecting power color for the card vendor, and now we're selecting card model, the RX 580. Now with this, you do not want to necessarily download the highest core clock BIOS that you can find, because your card may not be able to handle it. There are 1,450 megahertz BIOSes for the RX 580, and if your RX 480, like this one, ships with something that only goes to like 1,300 megahertz, you're gonna have a bad time. You might even completely brick the card because the VRMs will get too toasty and just outright fail on you. So be warned, when you're doing this, you want to download the least overclocked version. So with this, the Power Color Red Devil RX 580 8GB card, 1350 megahertz. That's, you know, 50 to 60 megahertz over what this Red Devil ships with. So we should be good with that. So we downloaded it, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna find it and then we're gonna put it in the ATI flash folder and I'm gonna rename it just so it's easier to do stuff with. So we're gonna do PC580, there we go. Now there are two ways from this point that you can actually flash the BIOS on the 480. You can go to the ATI Win flash utility right here 
and that's going to give you a nice decent GUI that allows you to just figure everything out. So you're going to load the image. That's super easy. It's the PC580 ROM. We're going to hit program. And there we go. We have our first error message. It says the subsystem IDs mismatch. That's because they're not necessarily the same card. So what the ATI WinFlash is saying is, hey, we're not gonna take this 580 BIOS and put it on the 480 because everything isn't quite aligning here. So we don't wanna brick your card. Perfectly fine. Good job, ATI WinFlash. So now the way we're gonna do this is we have to use the ATI Flash utility, which is a command prompt based program. So to, to launch command prompt, you wanna hit shift right click. Then we are, wait, what? No, right here. Shift right click, open command window here. That's gonna give us a command window in this folder so that if we type in ATI flash, it knows that we're referring to this ATI flash program that's right here. In order to find out which card you're going to be flashing, especially if you have more than one AMD GPU in your system, if your primary card is another AMD GPU, you have to make sure you're flashing the BIOS to the right card. So you type in ATI flash hyphen I, and that's going to display all of the ATI cards, the AMD cards that are in the system, and you're gonna find the adapter number. So the adapter number for this particular card is zero. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna type ATI flash dash P, which means we're gonna program the BIOS onto this 480. We're gonna type zero, then we're also gonna type the BIOS, the BIOS name, which is PC580.raw. And that's going to try to flash the BIOS onto the card. And see, we get the same issue. SSID mismatch. It's not allowing us to flash the 580 BIOS. Here's where here's where we can override it. So this, this is the tricky part. This is definitely where things can go wrong because we're going to force write the BIOS onto this 480. So we're gonna type the same things, ATI flash dash B. Instead, this time, we're gonna add dash F, which means that we're forcing the write of the BIOS to the 480. I've already tested this out. I know it works, so that's why I'm confident going ahead with this for you guys. PC580.ROM, so we have ATI flash hyphen P hyphen F zero, which is the adapter number, and then the name of the BIOS that we're trying to flash. It's going to force the write onto the 480 card, and that's going to allow us to then have a RX 580 in the shell of an RX 480. There goes the box. Flash type, all of the bytes were programmed, all of the bytes were verified, restart system to complete the BIOS update. That's totally fair. And just to make sure, you guys can see right here, if you wanna zoom in on this, we have an RX 480 right now. It says Radeon RX 480, power color gives us all of the details of what's happening. Okay, we're loaded back into Windows. The screen might flicker a few times. That's because the Radeon card is resetting itself, trying to get the driver's program for, yep, yeah, there we go. So the drivers are trying to initialize on the RX 480, now 580. Um, and depending on what card you have and what type of BIOS you have, you might not have to go through all of that. Your, your subsystem IDs may match and that you could just use the wind flash utility. It's possible. ATI flash is a bit more reliable. Uh, I've heard horrible stories of ATI wind flash going wrong. I've never experienced them myself, but just always make sure that you just take everything you're doing here with caution and make sure that you have all of the necessary steps in place to redo, undo, whatever you do. Does that make sense? Of course it does, because I'm a genius. All right, and it's the same GTX 1080 Ti, but then we drop down right here, Radeon RX 580 series card. We have the Radeon 580 series, if you wanna, if you wanna zoom in here. We have 580, we have power color, we have all of the ROPs, the TMUs, the shaders, and then we also have the GPU clock that we were going for. So we have a legitimate RX 580 happening right now. If we pull up the AMD Radeon settings, I hate the AMD software. Okay, software, hardware. Yes, so it says everything's fine. We are running an RX 580. So we're gonna shut down the system now. This isn't what you have to do. We wanna give you guys some specs as to how, how much faster this card performs now that it's a 580 versus a 480. Um, because the, the core clock that we were able to get on this 480 was something like 1,280 megahertz and we weren't able to overclock it at all. So with this 1,350 megahertz, we have a 70 megahertz overclock. We might actually even be able to overclock it any, even more. And we're just gonna test to see what, how big of a performance upgrade you get. So Tech, it's time to put this on the test bench. Benchmark this 580 for me. 
Yeah, thanks. So this method can work for basically any 480 or 470. You can flash a 480 to a 580, you can flash a 470 to a 570. You can also flash a 480 to a 570, although I wouldn't recommend that because you're actually losing, sh losing shaders in the process, which means you're gonna have a slower card overall, even if you do have higher frequencies. So don't do that. And if you try to flash a 470 to a 580, it's gonna try to be using shaders that don't exist and you're not gonna be able to get a boot. So we had a really terrific setup right here. It worked really quickly. The card actually boots, everything's good. But please, take what I'm doing with a huge grain of salt. You can indeed brick your card. You might not be able to boot into it. You might have to use a DOS prompt to recover it. And that's why we recommend saving your original BIOS so that in case something goes wrong, you have something to go back to. The tests on the flashed 580 went perfectly well. They were actually about where we expected them to fall. So over the 480 stock, the difference between the flashed 580 and the 480 was about two to 4% depending on which game you were playing, which makes perfect sense because the core clock on the flashed 580 was about 4% higher than it was on the stock 480. Now, if we compare it to the fastest RX 580 that's on the market, this XFX GTRS Black Edition, which comes with a core clock of 1450 megahertz, it falls behind by about five to 8%, which makes complete sense again, because the core clock on the 580 that we flashed is about 8% lower than the GTRS Black Edition. So I know you guys are probably wondering, why would I risk bricking my card and flashing it for a two to 4% performance gain? Well, it's not just the performance gain that you'll see. Obviously, you can overclock your card and you might be able to make up the difference, but having the 580 BIOS does bring additional benefits. One is that the 580 BIOS does allow the card to idle a bit lower. Even though the total TDP on the 580 is higher, its idle power states consume less power. So if you're just doing office work on your PC, this is definitely going to make it a much more efficient card. And on top of that, you might not be able to find another 480 that you would want to buy and put in your system in case you want to do crossfire because of the mining craze. So what you would be able to do is you could flash your 480 to a 580 and then you could buy a new 580 and you could crossfire them together, giving you some more longevity out of the 480 that you initially purchased. Obviously, these are just a few different scenarios and I actually happen to think that this Power Color Red Devil 480 that we have just isn't one of the best overclockers in the world. We kind of lost the silicon lottery. We couldn't get it to overclock when it was a 480. We could barely get it to overclock when we flashed it to a 580. So the only performance gain we could see out of this card was from flashing it. We couldn't get, we couldn't overclock the card to 1,350 megahertz. It just wasn't possible. So the BIOS still allowed us to unlock some extra performance that's in this card. You might have better luck with the GPU that you have. You might have a better chip which would allow you to get much higher core clocks, maybe even, even in the realms of 1,400 to 1,450 megahertz, potentially even 1,500 if you have a golden sample. But whether you want to pick up a new RX 580 or you want to upgrade your CPU, RAM, and motherboard, Woodware has you covered with their tremendous selection, fantastic prices, and absolutely bombastic customer service team. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wootware.co.za to boot up your PC. The link will be in the video description. They sponsor both the RX 480 and 580 for us to do the comparisons here today. Okay, so we're gonna wrap the video up there. Be sure to let us know what you thought of this RX 480 flashing video down in the comments or over on Twitter. I'm at UF Disciple. I wanna have a conversation. Do you think the risk of flashing a BIOS is worth it for the two to 4% extra performance gain you get? The ability to crossfire the lower idle power let me know what you guys think. Is it actually worth it? Would you do it? Also, be sure to smash that like button if you enjoy these types of how-to videos on how to get better performance out of, you know, cards that you might already have and make your system last a little bit longer. Also, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. And if you want to support what we do here at the UF Disciple channel, you can head on down into the video description. We do have an Amazon affiliate code where you can pick up a 480, a 580, any of your tech or mining needs. It would help us out a lot. It doesn't cost you a cent, but we get a small kickback whenever you do. Anyway, it's going to finish this video there. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.